Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Alternate, and this is my second tutorial for OneTaps API and JavaScript. Today I want to cover callbacks for events and rendering and create move and unload, things like that. See the main three in OneTap are um, right here. And then for events, here you go. You can get here by going to scripting. Uh, general and then CSGO events and you just click link and you have it open so you can pretty much see everything here and this is I'm pretty sure you can use every event in here and if you go back you can even see a lot of other games events but that's not super relevant to today's video other than what you can do with them so to start off, I'm just going to do a simple create move thing. Well, it's just going to print ticks every tick. So, what is create move though? Create move is basically called, and it's called every tick, once per tick, and you're supposed to do everything really to user command in it. Well, you can't do user command stuff anywhere else, just like you can't render outside of draw. Um, basically, yeah, it gets called every tick, and that's where movement's handled and a lot of other stuff that only needs to be handled once per tick. So to register it, you have to do cheat now register callback, and then you want to do capital C capital M create move, and then the name of your function. And this should now work in game. So if we go here, let's just go, and we open it up, reload. And now, now it's printing the ticks that have elapsed since the server has been running. And if we disable it, it will stop working. Nice. So that's kind of the gist of create move. Um, you can do some other things like set view angles. And well, I'm not. I'm not really gonna go too deep into this stuff yet, but there's some nice things you can do with this. Uh, false, just so you can see it. And yeah, there you go. And now I can't, I can't move my mouse. Well, I can, but it goes straight back to the middle every tick. Yeah, um, that's, that's pretty much it for create move. Now for draw, so we're just gonna change the name. Draw is where you render everything. So we have to do capital D draw and then the name of our function, which is draw. Oh, color case. And if you see now, if we try to run this, user commands must be edited from create move callback. So it's pretty it's pretty obvious like what the error is most of the time with one tap. It's definitely gotten a lot better since we got scripting uh, in November last year. But I digress. So for rendering, uh, we can do simple things like rectangles. Uh, so yeah, x, y, width, height, and color. Let's make it white. And if we reload the script now, there's a rectangle. It's pretty nice. Um, you can do a lot of complex things with rendering, such as making your own menu. Um, Pretty much everything works in draw, but obviously rendering won't work outside of it. This will only get called once, and on create move it'll flicker. I think it tries, but yeah, it'll say, it'll let you know. Um, but it, it will render on create move, I believe, but it will not work. Like, it'll flicker, because frames happen faster than 1 64th of a second, or 1 1 28th. But that's kind of the main thing. So I did actually set up something else to show, just to do with game events. And basically, it's a kill log of sorts. So basically, whenever the local player gets a kill, it'll print something in chat. So I'll go over this code in a second, but you see. Uh, you killed Eric with AK-47. Headshot is true. And it works on every kill. 
and it's pretty awesome. Pretty cool that we can do nice stuff in the API. So basically how this works is we use, let me pull up the event, hold on, there we go. So we go to goal offensive and player death. So all of this stuff here is what gets passed in when a callback is triggered. Basically a callback is linked to an event in the game and when that event is triggered, one tap will pass in all the information uh, and trigger the function. And when that function gets triggered, it'll have this, this information available to it. So basically you have all your event stuff which is right here. So RageBot Fire is uh, an event, but for event specific information, you have get string, get float, and get int. So for booleans, you use get int. For shorts, you use int. Strings, you use get string. And then shorts, I think, yeah, shorts, you still use int. But basically, I'm gonna explain this code now. For this specific event here, we use the attacker, the user ID, which was who died, the weapon, and the boolean, which is a headshot. So we get all these using the type. So attacker is a user, is an int, or a short. Look, uh, yeah, it's a short, just a user ID. And that's not the same as an index, but to transfer those, like to change them from a user ID to an index, you just use entity.get entity from user ID. And you can get the information, like I said, using event.getInt and the name of the data. And using all this information, I check if the attacker was the local player. And then I print out the player's name that died, the weapon name, and if there was a head, if it was a headshot or not. So this is just like a pretty cool thing you can do with uh, one tap. And as you can probably tell, you can also do something like this, where it can be turned into a kill say. Obviously you probably wouldn't want this this your kill say, but whatever. So we just do say I'll just make this a string. Just because make it easier. And then I mean I'll say I killed. And then it should work. Yeah, kill. I killed Eric with AK47 and with a headshot. That works for other guns, obviously. It's not gonna be the actual name all the time, but it does work. So it's just one example of something you can do with callbacks. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave your ideas for my next tutorial in the comments. I have some stuff planned, but I'm not super sure what to do next, so let me know.